We are going to talk about how to set up specific form submit events as conversions in GA4. Along the way, we're going to talk about how conversions work in general in GA4. The enhanced measurement form submit event that happens automatically if you're lucky. We're going to talk about how to use that to create a custom conversion event in GA4 for a specific form. We'll also go over how to do the same thing in Tag Manager because sometimes that enhanced measurement event doesn't give us what we need. We'll finish just with a little bit about reporting on conversions in GA4. So to get started, let's talk about how conversions work. So I'm in my GA4 account and I've gone to Admin Events. And you can see all the events that are tracking on my website. And then you can see here that you can mark any of these events as a conversion. And by doing so, there's a conversion conversions column that shows up in reports in GA4 and there's a conversions metric. So when any of the events that I flagged as conversions happen, a conversion will be counted. But it is different than Universal Analytics where you had specific metrics for each conversion event. The thing that we're going to be talking about today is we have this form submit event, which is an automatically collected event, or I will point out that sometimes it doesn't actually work, the automatically collected event, and we'll talk about how to, to overcome that. But when it does work, you could just say all form submits count as conversions, but most people have different forms on their website and they want each one of them to count as its own conversion type. So for example, maybe you have a job application form and a contact us form, and you want each of them to track as different conversions. So we'll talk about how to do that. For my first example, I'm going to show you how to set up a contact us form submit event, which you can then flag as a conversion. So if you wanted just to report on when people submit your contact us form, and we'll assume that your the automatic event is working for you, the enhanced measurement event, you'll know that it is if you see form submit events tracking here and you haven't actually set up your own form submit event. So if you've just installed the configuration tag, then you'll want to go and test out your form. You won't see it show up here right away. I will show you how you can see it. One is that you can go to reports and then real time. And then if you've gone and tested submitting your form, you'll see your form submit event happening down here. Another way, and I, I tend to use this a lot when I'm setting up and troubleshooting tags, is to use Tag Assistant. And because I have the J4 tags implemented via Tag Manager, I'm going to go into Tag Manager and open Preview Mode. You don't necessarily have to do this, but I've run into problems running Tag Assistant without having Tag Manager Preview Mode enabled. So I'm going to go to Tag Manager. And I'm going to open my website and I'm going to enable preview mode and this will open Tag Assistant. So then I can open my website, which is shown here. If you don't see yours, you can type it in. Okay, so now Tag Assistant is connected. And from Tag Assistant, I can see both tags that are implemented via Tag Manager. If I click on this G hyphen, this is my GA4 account, then I can see specifically j4 tags now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my contact page and i'm going to fill this out then if you go back to tag assistant you're going to see the form submit event here and you'll see a bunch of parameters associated with this form submit event the one that i'm going to pay attention to right now is the page location parameter so what we know is that a form submit event happened where the page location was the contact page. So we're going to use that to set up the conversion in GA4. So now I'm back in admin events in GA4. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create event an event right here. So to create an event, all I have to do is give the event a name, then specify the parameter values that are going to trigger this custom event. 
So the first thing is that I want to track when a form submit event happens. And then I only want to count it, the contact us submission, when that form submit event happens from the contact us page. So if you recall, the page location is a parameter that exists. What I'm going to do, and I'm also going to say starts with, exact matching might be okay, but in case there's parameters stuck in the end of the page, uh, like let's say somebody arrived there via a link with UTM parameters, something like that. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste that here and that's it. So I've just added my event and this is super easy. If you have different forms on your website and the form submit event is working, the automatic one, then all you have to do is come in here and in many circumstances, it's good enough just to say that when a form submit happens on this page, this is the event I want to count. Then we've got the contact us submission event here because I had previously created created it and, and just all you have to do is flag it as a conversion. So that's it for that. Now I mentioned that a lot of times the automatic form submit event doesn't track. I guess the other thing that I'll mention is that in this case the page location was all I needed. Sometimes there may be other values that you need to use. Like let's say you have more than one form on a page. The approach I'm going to described to you will cover some of those instances because you'll see you see here we have a bunch of parameters that are related to the user but not that many parameters that are related to the form itself. Next up what I want to walk you through is in my circumstance the automatic form submit event isn't working so I had to create one in Tag Manager and that gives me the abil ability to add other parameters that I could use to set up specific form submit events in GA4. Okay, so now I'm in my Google Tag Manager account. And if you end up having to create custom events from which you're going to create custom conversions, I definitely recommend that you do it in Tag Manager. It is possible to do it via tags placed directly on the website, but Tag Manager really makes it more flexible, easier, faster, easier to maintain. I'll pop up a video that goes through Tag Manager and sort of helping you understand Tag Manager if you're not familiar. I'm going to assume that you're somewhat familiar with Tag Manager. Just to recap, so in Tag Manager, there's a couple of things we can do that are going to be really valuable for us here. One is that we can create triggers based on different interactions on a page. For example, if you're setting up form submit tracking and that automatic form submit event doesn't happen, then maybe a click on a specific button that has like the text submit on it might be a way that you could track. It's not going to be 100% reliable because somebody could click that button and the form could fail to send. But a lot of times that's your best option if the standard form submit event doesn't work. You can also create variables and those variables can be based on things like the button text, so let's say a form ID or the ID of the element that's clicked, which can be useful, especially for identifying which form was submitted. So in the example where you have more than one form on a page, maybe it's not good enough to just say the page location is such and such. You're going to have to say that there's a form ID or a button ID uh, or button text that you want to use to track your, your form submit. In my case, what I ended up doing, and I'll, I'll show this to you, I'm going to go in, back into preview mode. And I'm going to submit this contact form. So what I did is, is see this thanks for reaching out text. There's a trigger in Tag Manager called element visibility. And using the element that's visible, where there's some sort of confirmation text. It's more common nowadays that when a form submit happens, it doesn't actually leave the page that you're on. And you can see here that's exactly what happened. It's still the contact page. So the only thing that's really different here is this thank you text. The reason I like this versus, for example, having a form submit event happen when somebody clicks a submit button is that I know that the form went through. So let's say that the form requires that you have a valid email address and so it doesn't validate. We are not going to get the thank you message in that case. So what I did is 
I went here and I inspected this element and we have this Elementor message, Elementor message success. So we're using WordPress and we have Elementor. And whenever a form submit succeeds, there's going to be a element with this class associated with it. So if we go back here. What I did in Tag Manager is I set up a trigger. It's this all form submit trigger. And if you open it up, you see that we have the configuration of it is CSS selector and then this dot element or message dot element or message success. What that's looking for is an element with these classes. So the dot is an indicator of a class or a pound sign that would be an indicator of an ID. Um, you do see this message, the selected options may affect site performance. So that is a consideration. Again, I like using the element visibility in the success message just because I know for sure that the form has submitted a little bit of a trade-off in performance. So I created that trigger. And then if we go to tags, I've got my GA4 form submit event on that trigger. So it's using that all form submit trigger. And then you'll see the other thing that I did is I included some special parameters. So page location is a parameter that happens automatically. In fact, technically, I don't even need this parameter in here because the configuration tag will track page location as a parameter and every tag you add via a tag manager inherits parameters from the configuration tag. I think I probably didn't know that when I set this up originally, but I did add these form ID, form text, form URL parameters. And the reason I did that is in case when I'm setting up the event in GA4, I need to know specifically the form ID. So again, a good example of that might be um, in a case where the, there's more than one form on a page. Just quickly show you that where, so those variables come from this big list of variables here. And if we look here, you can see all the possible variables that I could include that relate in some cases to um, the specific form, the page that you're on, and so on. So. Hopefully you get the idea. Again, if you're not familiar with Tag Manager, learn more about it. I'm adding parameters for some of the standard elements related to a form so that I can use those parameters in GA4 to specify which form was submitted. Now, in my case, if you see down here my GA4 tags, I have this form submit event. And all that's doing is sending a form submit, which replaces the enhanced measurement form submit event, which doesn't work on my website. You could also, if you wanted to, create events for specific forms on your website. I like doing it this way. Just it's a way of keeping track of forms that are getting submitted on my website. Um, so I do actually like having just a generic form submit event. But as you saw before, I then created specific uh, events for different forms that were submitted on my website. And you'll see that I have the standard form submit event is not a conversion. There are specific forms that I have set up as conversions, and that's why I did it that way. So that's a quick tour of how to set up custom events. Tag Manager, super powerful. I, I really don't think I've run into a circumstance where I couldn't create the event I wanted to create in Tag Manager. Sometimes it might require setting up custom HTML tags and doing some JavaScript stuff. But, but in any case, within Tag Manager, you have the tools you need to track anything you want as an event. And then any event can be at a conversion in GA4. The last thing I want to show you is now that we have our, our conversion events, where can we see them? Well, that part's a little frustrating. So in Universal Analytics, we had metrics for each conversion. If we go into a report in GA4 under, let's go to acquisition, traffic acquisition. There is a column for conversions and I can filter this for specific conversions. So here's my contact us submission and we can see how many contact us submission events happened. 
but that doesn't exist as a metric in, in and of itself. So if I wanted to customize a report to see that um, just contact us submissions as a column, I couldn't do that. I can do it if I add it as a custom metric, but that's a little tricky. And in a minute, I'll link to a video that walks through how to do specifically that. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you found it helpful, let me know by clicking on the like button. I really appreciate it. If you are wondering how to report on conversions in Looker Studio, I recorded a video that describes how to do just that. So check that out. And in a second, I'll pop up a link to a playlist with more J4 tips and tricks. And lastly, check out 2Octobers.com if you'd like more help with J4, setting it up, training, we work ahead.